Welcome back, everyone, to the channel. Tonight's terrifying story is about this 10-year-old boy who ventures off into the deep woods all by himself, which is located on his property past his backyard. What he encounters is like another dimension, another alternate reality, per se. And what happens and what he discovers there will terrify you. Now let's get spooky. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, click on that bell, and smash that thumbs up and tell a friend. I was 10 years old when it happened. I was playing in the backyard with my Tonka truck, along with my thoughts, as I had done many times before. I was shy so the neighborhood kids didn't like me too much, and I rarely played sports, which only made things worse. Fortunately, my backyard was connected to a small forest, which provided plenty of diversion for me and my burgeoning imagination. The grass was moist from the morning's rainfall. The lawn was mucky and gross. Needless to say, I was covered head to toe in dirt, as I vroomed my toy truck along the rim of the yard, digging up dirt and rocks and worms. I inched along the sodden soil on shabby knees, truck in hand, heading towards my favorite tree. This tree, a wondrous red oak, stood at the edge of the forest. My father had built a ladder going up it, so I could climb it really high. I liked that. Sometimes, I would read books up there until it got dark. This particular afternoon, however, I didn't feel like climbing. I was having fun gathering acorns and mixing them with the mud and stones, pretending to build a house. Then I heard a voice. Freddy, the voice whispered. I looked up, startled. No one was around, so I continued playing. Psst. Freddy, over here. Again, I looked around. Nothing. Although my heart was racing, I was too young to worry. That would come later. Instead, I shrugged and returned to play. Then my Tonka truck started driving itself. It steered around the base of the oak tree, stopping at the other side of the tree. The side that was off the beaten path. Ah, heck, I scolded as I crawled to the other side of the tree. I was already filthy. What's more dirt gonna do? Mom would make me wash up before dinner anyways. The truck beeped, as if telling me to hurry up. By now, I had forgotten about the anonymous voice. I fumbled through the foliage, cursing the fallen acorns as they dug into my knees. The truck was parked at the base of the tree its big black tires clinging to the bark like insects. The tree towered high above me, its branches like arms flexing its might. I looked up and felt nauseous. The voice came back. Hey, kid. Fear started creeping in. I should go home now, I told myself, matter-of-factly. A heavy gust of wind rustled through my hair. The tree trembled. Nah, the voice replied, sounding like a bad guy on TV. You should stay here with me. My truck started flapping its dump bed as if to agree. That's when I noticed the face on the tree staring back at me. It's more fun in here, the tree said. You wait and see. The truck blew its horn, then disappeared into the face of the tree. Anger came quickly. I wanted my truck back. It was a gift from my grandmother. Give me back my truck, I pouted. The tree huffed and puffed. Come on, kid. Aren't you the least bit curious? I was. Then come inside. Have a look. You'll love it in here, I promise. The tree was trying to sound pleasant, which only made it worse. 
I shook my head and crossed my arms. The tree chortled. Its droopy red eyes were completely insane. My ten-year-old self was both terrified and intrigued. I had never heard of a talking tree before. This can't be real, I told myself. For a moment, nothing happened. The tree blinked automatically while it waited. Finally, and against my better judgment, I stuck my head inside its elongated mouth just for a peek. The tree swallowed me whole. I felt a whoosh. Then everything went gray. When I stepped out, the forest seemed different. The trees loomed larger than life the air as fresh as a morning sunrise. Welcome to the forest. A sparrow sung sweetly, then disappeared into the glow of the honeycomb sun. A red-tailed hawk stopped on a nearby branch. I'm the biggest bird in the forest, it boasted, its voice sounding like a chainsaw. I was dumbfounded. I had forgotten about my truck. Atta boy, the tree said, scaring me out of my mental slumber. I jumped to my feet with furious fists. I was mad as hell, but also I was intrigued. Everything around me was bursting with brilliance. The sky was the deepest blue I had ever seen. The grass as green as a crisp dollar bill. Welcome to the forever forest, the tree said, grinning ear to ear. It reached out and shook my hand. You'll love it here, Freddy, I promise. Words failed me. I was stupefied. My mind was fighting sensory overload. I pinched myself to see if I was dreaming. I wasn't. Something ran over my foot. I leapt ten feet in the air. My faithful Tonka truck was scooting around in the tall grass, tooting its tiny horn. What is this place? I heard myself ask. The red oak rustled its branches. I told you already, the tree said. You're in the forever forest. I took a tentative step backwards and rubbed my eyes. My truck beeped. A flock of birds were pecking at it, stealing bits from its dump box. The truck raced down the steep incline, letting the birds eat dust. Hey, come back! I shouted. My voice ricocheted off the trees. The sound lasted for hours. By now, all eyes were aimed at me, waiting. My heart was pounding through my Spider-Man t-shirt, which was caked in filth. The red-tailed hawk soared overhead. It scooped up my truck, and before I could protest, it dropped it to my feet. Here you go, kid, the hawk said. I looked at the toy truck with scorn. Doot doot, said the truck. Without warning, sadness swept over me. I longed for home. Nothing here seemed real, yet somehow I knew it was. I had discovered a secret place, the land of the forgotten. A parallel universe, perhaps. Even at my tender age, I knew this meant trouble. Yes, the birds and trees seemed pleasant, but something in their eyes told me otherwise. They meant to keep me here forever. I want to go home. I put my foot down as I said this. Thunder crashed in the distance. The tree rattled in rage. I'm afraid that's impossible, it said. Nobody leaves the forever forest. At this moment, the limitations of my age became unbearable. I yearned for an adult to come rescue me. Uh-huh, I protested. The tree shook violently. The ground quivered. I shot off like a firecracker, screaming down the slope, until my feet became tangled and I tripped. Consequently, I rolled down the hill like a bubbling avalanche. When I reached the bottom, 
Both my arms and legs were riddled with scrapes and bruises. I dropped to my knees and bawled my eyes out. I don't remember being sadder and more scared in my life. My tears formed a river which flowed freely through the forest, reaching as far as my watering eyes could see. It was the onset of nightfall that sobered me up. The sun was sinking like a stone. The moon hung overhead, big and round and full. Apparently, time in this world, time was different. Then my tummy tossed and turned. I was famished. Just then an apple rolled down the hill, stopping at my feet. It was as red as a fire truck, plump as Thanksgiving dinner. I picked it up, dusted it off, and took a bite. It was delicious. By far the juiciest apple ever to grace my lips. I ate greedily. Lightning flashed overhead, casting sinister shadows all around me. Thunder roared its wrongful wrath. I became grossly self-conscious, feeling the gaze of the trees standing over me. I didn't belong here. This much was obvious. I scanned the vicinity. The forest was endless. I was too scared to venture any deeper, so I hurried back up the hill looking for the face of the tree. Surely, if I asked nicely, it would let me leave. When I reached the top of the hill, the tree chortled. Back so soon, Freddy boy? The neighboring trees snickered. I was about to reply when I felt a drop of rain followed by another. Suddenly, the world went dark. Rain fell like missiles, soaking me head to toe. I sulked. The tree scuffed. It's just a little rain, Freddy boy. You're not scared of rain, are you? I shivered. My translucent skin succumbed to the wetness of my grimy clothes. I felt miserable. Without a second thought, I ventured to the front of the tree. Fortunately, Daddy's steps were still nailed into the bark. I climbed up, stopping under a thick branch, which provided some much-needed shelter. I want to go home, I said, shaking in my shoes. You are home, the tree replied. Isn't that right? Why, of course, the surrounding trees responded in a chorus of agreement. But... Just remember, kid, the tree interrupted. Do not listen to the snake. S snake? What snake? The forest erupted with laughter. Every animal, big and small, joined in, and with that, the forever forest fell under a blanket of silence. Subtle snoring wafted through the thicket of trees like a lonesome lullaby. I never wanted to be home as badly as I did at that moment. My mind meandered to my parents. Every terrible thing I had said to them came flooding back like a bad dream. Would they even miss me? The other kids in the neighborhood surely wouldn't. Nobody liked me. Maybe I was better off in the forever forest. Maybe I could finally make some real friends. Friends who liked me. Once again, I wept. Then I curled up in between two strong branches and drifted into a restless sleep. Something slithered across me. I awoke in a flash. My screams were a tidal wave of displeasure. The tree cursed, then returned to its peaceful slumber. Hello, Frederick. A slithery voice spoke. It took a moment for my eyes to adjust. Don't be alarmed, said the snake. I'm your friend, your best friend. A six-foot rattlesnake was weaving its way across my arms and legs. Its skin felt like sandpaper. I froze. My fear of snakes was merciless. There was nowhere to go except down. The fall would hurt, but would not be lethal. At least, not in a normal world. 
I want to go home, I said, embarrassed by my grief-stricken voice. Well, said the snake, staring deep into my eyes, maybe I could help you with that. It slithered up my body, stopping directly in front of my face. The smell of soggy reptile skin steeped into my nostrils and stayed there. You can? I stuttered. Of course, the snake bragged. Its eyes sparkled as it spoke. I'm the ruler of these here parts. You are? I asked. Then do it, please. That will depend on what you're willing to do for me. There's always a catch. Even as a child, I knew this to be true. What do you want from me? The snake hissed. When its forked tongue fondled my nose, my bladder almost gave out. Well, it spoke, surreptitiously. Let's see what we've got to work with. The snake, now inches from my eyes, was penetrating my mind. I could feel it rattling around, rummaging through my memories. Ah, yes, it said after an uncomfortable length of time. You'll do just fine. By now, I am scared as I've ever been. My arms and legs were cramped, and if I didn't relieve my bladder, I'd explode. A scurry of squirrels had gathered at the trunk of the tree, cautiously looking up. The snake backed off a bit. Its doer face produced what I imagined to be a smile. Let me introduce myself, said the snake. The name's Salvador, but folks around here call me Spook. Spook spoke with an air of royalty. This was no ordinary snake. Heck, this was no ordinary forest. He slid up an adjust branch and wrapped himself around it never taking his eyes off me. Without hesitation, I climbed down the tree, found some bushes, and peed. It felt like heaven. Spook laughed. <laughs> well done, kid, well done. When I finished, I was surprised to see Spook slinking around my ankles. Now, he said in a more serious tone, Let's get down to business, shall we? We did. Spook talked. He had plenty to say. Spook promised to bring me back to my world, no questions asked, but only if I made him famous. I chuckled at the thought, thinking I was getting off easy. There would be consequences, Spook warned, but he assured me there'd be minutes. And for my troubles, he added with a wisp, I'd have all the earthly pleasures at my disposal. I agreed. Excellent, said the snake. He led me back to the talking tree, where I was surprised by the handwritten contract waiting by the exposed roots. I'd never seen such fancy script before. The paper seemed ancient, like from medieval times, and looked to be made of animal skin. Beside the contract was a fountain pen. I dipped the pen into the bottle of ink next to it. Sign the dotted line, said the snake. Then you can return to your home and I shall become famous. I didn't trust the sound of his voice, nor the look in his beady black eyes. But what choice did I have? I signed the parchment. The snake smiled. I'll see you in your dreams, kid. Small circles swirled inside Spook's eyes, hypnotizing me. I became disoriented. Then, everything went dark. I awoke next to the tree, squint-eyed and confused. I stood up abruptly and fell over. I had tripped over my Tonka truck. Toot toot, said the truck. Fear filled me fast. Was I still in the forever forest? Good God, I hope not. Up ahead was the edge of the tree line leading to my backyard. 
I ran full steam ahead, forgetting my truck. There was a commotion coming from inside my house. Something had happened. Something bad. Before I knew it, my grandmother was embracing me. She was weeping. My mind filled with dread. Something was wrong. Terribly wrong. What had I done? My grandmother said four words that would forever change the course of my life. Your parents are dead. As it turned out, I had only been gone for a few hours, during which time my parents slipped away to pick up groceries for dinner while my grandmother waited at home. My parents never returned. How could they? On their way back from the grocery store, they were sideswiped by a transport truck, killing them instantly. The rest of that summer was a blur. I stayed with my grandmother, who later adopted me. The feeling that I was somehow responsible for my parents' death was impossible to ignore. My grief helped me forget the forgotten forest. I must have fallen asleep beside the tree and dreamt the entire episode. Slowly over time, I convinced myself of this. All I wanted was my parents to return. They never did, of course. They were dead. The following school year, my class was assigned to write a story. The best story would be printed in the local newspaper. I dove into this project as though my life depended upon it. Since the passing of my parents, my classmates resented me even more. Their teasing was relentless. I had become the orphan boy. The story was all I had. The story wrote itself. I called it The Adventures of the Forever Forest. In it, I included a talking snake named Spook, who ruled over the forest and our hero, Chester, a toy truck, who protected the forest creatures from Spook and his inevitable wrath. The story won first prize, and to my amazement, was published by several prominent magazines across America. Agents from across the country were beating down my door. Next thing I know, I'm on the news, and Spook is famous. I was 11 years old, and this was all new to me. The Forever Forest was included in a popular video game, Cha-Ching. My post-secondary was now paid for. My grandmother was over the moon with pride. My good fortune continued. By the time I had finished high school, I was the number one selling author of creepy children's books. Turns out, the world couldn't get enough of the Forever Forest. Millions of children worldwide fell in love with Spook and his slithering setbacks. Chester's adventures were contagious. Twelve books later, including several Pixar adaptations, I'm rich beyond my wildest dreams. Who knew? That's how I became America's cherished children's author. My beautiful wife, Isabel, adored me wholeheartedly. Her love never wavered. She was my rock, my soulmate, my reason for living. Life was grand. At least for a while. Which leads me to the reason why I'm writing this story in the first place. Something happened to me that curious afternoon. The day I signed my life away to the talking snake in a lively forest. Something peculiar. Not only did I lose both my parents, the two people who truly loved me. I've aged. I look and feel twice my age on a good day. Which is why I rarely do interviews. Fortunately, my success has awarded me the luxury of shunning myself from the rest of the world. I'm an author. It's to be expected. The reason I was able to scribble down so many stories in such a short amount of time is because Spook would narrate them to me in my sleep. Every so often, he'd pay me a visit, and I'd wake up with fresh ideas. All I had to do was jot them down, which I did, to the praise of millions of readers. Recently, however, Spook stopped visiting me. Thus, the stories dried up. To make matters worse, my wonderful wife passed away. Cancer came fast and hard. She didn't have a chance. 
Soon I'll be seeing her. My dreams tell me this. In fact, I'll be gone by the time any of you read this. Even typing these words is a chore. My hands ache. My bones creak. I'm as blind as a bad idea. My Tonka arrived this morning. I haven't seen that silly yellow truck since that fateful day in the woods. This is the sign I've been waiting for. Today I shall return to the Forever Forest. It's still there, I can assure you. Only this time I'll be staying. My time has come. Thank you, Forever Reader, for all you've given me. I've lived a king's life, and I owe it all to you. Well, you and the talking serpent who goes by the name Spook. And lest we forget Lester and the talking tree, and all the other creatures in the lesser-known land I discovered long ago. Yes, I'm heading back to the source of all the magic. The one place I truly belong. The Forever Forest. <laughs>